so you'll want to go flawless, right? Well, don't we all? But it's not exactly easy these days. And some of you might just be starting your journey to improve in the Crucible, which means we need all the help we can get. So in this video, we're going to cover what I think is the single most important piece of advice that will help you improve in Trials and ultimately help you go flawless. What's up everyone, I am Godin Gaming, and today we're going to learn why it is so important to play the res. Playing the res is the most impactful thing you can do in Trials and Elimination. It allows you to hold and push your advantage, and it can also negate the enemy's advantage. So knowing how to play the res is going to be a great asset. But obviously, you will also want a good foundation. Things like landing next to cover, using your abilities, and some basic teamwork. These are things I've already covered, and are things I'm going to assume you know about. If you don't, checking those videos out would definitely help you out in Trials, as those are fundamental tools that will help you get some wins. But in my opinion, our ability or inability to play the res will often decide the outcome of the round and even the match. And ultimately, it'll be the difference between you going flawless or resetting your card. So let's get to learning what play the res means. For starters, we need to know some details on how the res works in Trials. Because if you don't know how they work, you won't know how to play them properly and you'll likely lose engagements because of it. You might push too late and miss your chance or push too early and not know you're a sitting duck. I know these details aren't always sexy, but this is just something we need to know. Anyway, here we go. After a Guardian's first death, the res becomes available after 6 seconds. For every death after that, you just add another 7 seconds. So after the Guardian's second death, the res becomes available after 13 seconds. After the third, it's going to be 20 seconds. After the fourth, well, you've got bigger problems at that point, but it is available after 27 seconds. And yes, it does keep going. Also, these timers are Guardian dependent. So that means if Guardian A goes down, it does not affect the res timer for Guardian B after their first death. When getting the res in Trials, it'll take about 1.5 seconds for the interact to complete. That's going to be how long you have to hold the button for the res to take. And for the animation to complete, that is how long the person being res has to wait before they can actually move, is about 1.75 seconds. So to get a fully successful res, it's going to take you just over 3 seconds, coming in at around 3.25. When someone does get the res, it'll give both the resi and the reser an overshield. Alright, now let's cover some things you can do while getting the res that will not reset the progress. Number one is shooting. You can absolutely and are encouraged to shoot your gun while getting the res. Another thing that can help with that is also strafing. Strafing will not reset the progress of the res unless you go too far. There's also a few abilities we can use that will not reset the res. And let's start with grenades. Like we talked about before, grenades are a huge advantage, so you should feel free to use those while getting the res. Another great one is dodge. Though dodge can be a great ability, you have to be careful when using it to get the res as it can sometimes push you outside of the location of the res, which therefore resets the progress. Another ability we can use is your super, though we'll talk about if it's worth it later. Also do keep in mind that a few of these supers are an exception and will cancel the res. That's gonna be Silence and Squall, Tether, Blade Barrage, Nova Bomb, and Chaos Reach. All right, now let's move on to what will reset the progress of the res. So obviously we have taking damage. If you take damage from anything, it will reset it to zero. Now, as far as abilities go, we talked about a few, but there's a couple that will stop you from getting the res. They are barricade and rift. If you try to get the res and then barricade or rift, you'll be set back to zero. So do be careful when trying to use those. All right, I know that's a lot of somewhat dry and boring information, but like I said, we just need to keep those details in mind if we plan to play the res properly. Now that we have a few details about how the resurrections work in Trials, let's talk about what we need to do with that information. Number one, stop the res. Stop the res refers to, as you've probably guessed, stopping the enemy team from resurrecting their ally. And why is this important? Well, I mean, the main objective is to wipe the entire team, so obviously that's going to be impossible to do if they keep resurrecting their friends. In essence, stopping the res is just literally how you win rounds. Another reason it's important is that it helps you maintain an advantage. If a 3v3 becomes a 3v2 in your favor, then your team now has 50% more health and firepower. If it's 2v1, then now you have double the health and firepower. That's a really big advantage. And since you work hard to get those advantages, you should want to keep them. Losing numbers advantage makes it easy for the enemy to make a comeback and potentially swing the round in their favor. So we need to prevent this, and we do so by stopping the res. So how do we stop the res? Well, the best way is to just kill the remaining enemies. Real galaxy brain play right there, but for real. Outside of that, the best way to stop the res is to push the res location. 
it's obviously going to be much harder for them to get the res if your team is already in that area or if you're in a position to shoot anywhere near the res. If you're on the other side of the map or not pushing towards the res, it basically means they're going to get a freebie and negate the advantage you just got, which again is super bad. And since we know the res timer is very short on the first kill, we need to make sure you push the res as fast as possible. However, that doesn't mean we should throw our life away just to push the res. If you're away from your team, you have to be careful when pushing so as to not give the enemies an easy 1v1. An easy way to avoid this is simply pushing with your team. Pushing the res kind of focuses your attention. If you see two pings on the radar, one to the left and one to the right, then you should know that if you want to push the res, you should just go to the one that is closest to the res. The other person is kind of a distraction. So if you find yourself in that situation, you should obviously prioritize the person who's close to the res. Pushing the res also implies you know where to go. And ideally, well, you will. But the only way that's gonna happen consistently and with confidence is good communication. Communication is its own beast that I'll likely cover later, but for now, in trials, just work on making res callouts and fast. If you get a kill, call it out. Ideally, you'll also say where, but just saying I got a kill should ping everyone that they need to mobilize and capitalize on that. You would think that everyone would know, but people often just miss stuff in game, so if you do get a kill, just make sure to call it out. So that's the first tip to stopping the res. Push the res. The second best way to stop the res is to use your abilities. Zoning aids like solar, vortex, void wall, etc. are all great when you place them directly on the ghost. Ideally, you'll wait until they're actually getting the res to use your abilities. Otherwise, they can just ignore it and wait till it runs out. And yes, that does buy you some time, which is useful, but if you do it properly, you can get some free damage in as well. So make sure you wait until the res is available before using your abilities, since you aren't stopping the res if it isn't even up yet. Other abilities can also be used. Barricades can be super useful here to block doorways that will lead to the res or just shut down a lane. And the new Glacier Nade could also be used the same way. Rifts near the res can also allow you to stay there longer, which is really helpful. Supers can also be used to stop the res, but generally I would only use my super that way if things were looking really dicey. Side note, I do have a video on how to get some better use of your abilities, so check that out if you're interested. But in general, Use your abilities to stop the res. And I kind of joked about it at first, but yeah, killing the remaining enemies is a great option when it comes to stopping the res. Though this mostly only applies if you have numbers advantage. If you have the numbers, you can definitely push them to close the round. Just make sure the direction you're pushing doesn't allow them to simply walk up to the res. Also, when your team is pushing from multiple angles, make sure your strong side is the direction of the res. If you have three people up, you should send two in the direction of the res and the other to flank. Though the flanker should still play safe since they are alone. If you only send one person in the direction of the res, you risk them getting an easy win on a 1v1 and then getting the res. So not only negating your advantage, but also putting you at a disadvantage. So make sure you push the numbers. In the event that they do get the res, make sure you get in as much damage as possible. If the enemy getting the res is visible, you need to prioritize that guardian as they can shoot you, but the person getting res can't. They are the initial threat. But if you can only see the person being res, make sure you're getting as much damage as you can. They can't hurt you, but you can kill them before they even get to do anything, which makes their next res timer that much longer. In essence, you're kind of stopping the res if the guardian gets killed immediately. So don't waste that time and get some damage in. So. Those are some ways we can stop the res. We should push the res, use your abilities, push your numbers, get some damage in. Now, on to the next topic, get the res. So just as stopping the res is the way in which you win the round, getting the res, as in picking up your teammate, is your way of preventing your team from losing the round. The enemy can't win the round if you keep resing each other. And just as stopping the res helps you maintain an advantage, Getting the res can negate a disadvantage. If your last guardian standing against two enemies, that is a pretty rough scenario. But if you get a res, that suddenly can easily go either way. And in other scenarios where it's a 2v2, getting a res means you now have a new advantage. So getting the res can negate a disadvantage and also help you gain an advantage. Needless to say, getting the res is extremely important in trials and a valuable skill. So how do we get the res? Well, these should all feel familiar. We will again, push the res. We obviously can't get a res if we're across the map doing our own thing, and the res timers are very short. Hopefully you remember how long by now. If you don't, then you should probably go back and check. 
but because the res timers are so short, if we're able to push the res quickly, we can often get a free res and thereby negating the disadvantage. So when someone goes down, get there quickly. You don't have to stand on the ghost if the timer isn't up yet, but you do want to be nearby for when it is. So make sure you push the res. When pushing the res, you don't want to throw your life away just to get there. If your route is not looking good, it is totally fine to take a different angle. Playing with your team is also still a great option here. Just like before, this also implies you know where to go. This one is a little bit more obvious, but it still helps out to call out when you die and ideally where. The more pings verbal or on screen someone gets, the more likely they are to react to them. So just call out your death or any ally's death as quickly as possible. And again, make sure to push the res. And next up, again, is use your abilities. Abilities are a type of advantage, and the best way to use them is to leverage them to get more advantages or negate a disadvantage. So if we can use our abilities to zone enemies off the res location and ensure that we get the res, that is a good use of your abilities. Landing some good damage with your nades can ensure they either back off or fight while weak, which means you now have a good opening. Again, things like barricade are extremely useful here. Putting them right on the ghost is so f***ing strong. Just do it, all the time. Abuse the f out of that shit. Rifts can again be useful, though I wouldn't put it on the res, as that is basically time spent not getting the res and the animation leaves you open. Because remember, it will stop your progress when you try to get the res. So I'd again use the rift just nearby. Also, while supers are very good for getting the res, since you will likely have damage resistance and it will be harder for the enemies to push you, I'm not sure that I would use those all the time, as they are a huge advantage that can swing an entire round. So. Do use them to get the res, but only if totally necessary. Another mirror is also just killing the enemies, or at least using the numbers in your favor. If you can get an easy kill, I would just go for it. If it's 2v3 and they send one flanker alone, it could be a good strategy to push that lone target, making it a 2v2. That's one less piece on the board which can make it easier to get the res. So look for easy kills if you can. Also. If presented with a choice between two directions or two enemies, you almost always push towards wherever your res is. If you push the enemy that is towards your res, that could potentially turn into more numbers for you later on, which again, is a really good advantage. However, if you push away from the res, it's just gonna be harder to recoup your numbers. So I can't stress this enough. Push the numbers, even if they're on the floor. If we do get the res, please, make sure you aren't letting your teammates get farmed, i.e. don't go in for a quick unsafe res just because you can. If you don't look for snipers or you just run away after getting the res of 1.5 seconds, you're basically leaving your teammate totally exposed for the duration of that animation. And that reminds me, do you remember how long that animation was? Again, yeah, if you don't remember, you should probably go back and check. But anyway, your ally can easily get killed off the res. And now they have an even longer res timer. And on top of that, the enemies now have more super energy. So if you're getting a res, you wanna make sure it's safe. And if it's risky, you'll at least wanna get some damage in as the animation happens. One tactic is to hide behind cover while you get the res and then peek out as soon as the animation starts. This can often catch people by surprise since they thought they'd have an easy shot, but now there's somebody shooting at them. Another tactic could be to slide into your ally. This causes their character model to move around, which can make their shots a little bit harder to get. Either way, you need to protect the res. So those are some of the ways we can get the res. They are a mirror of the first, so they should look familiar. But to recap, we should push the res, use your abilities, push your numbers, protect the res. Now that we have some info on how to play the res, I think it'd be helpful to go over some likely scenarios that you'll probably be dealing with that have to do with playing the res. So first up, should I super to play the res? It really depends on how easy the reses are to cover and if you can secure a kill while also playing the res. See, your super is a really big advantage. Popping your super near the beginning of a round can often lead to an easy win. So it would be really bad to waste it on just getting one person up or just getting one kill. So my general rule of thumb is if you can move around two numbers in your favor, it's probably worth it. Two numbers in your favor would mean something like getting two reses or getting one res and one kill or getting two kills. So if you think you can do that, I say go for it. However, this is assuming your team didn't already use other supers in that same round as that would kind of be a waste. Also, if it's the last round, obviously use your super. There's nothing worse than going to orbit with your super. All right, next up. If it's a 2v1, should we push or should we get the res? Unless your team res is super easy, I say push. And this is mostly a numbers thing. Like I mentioned, if it's a 2v1, you have double the health and firepower. If you try to get the res, 
you essentially risk the enemy getting a res and it can easily become a 3v2. And that means you'd only have 50% more health and firepower, which isn't as good. And it's also more variables to worry about on the map. And if you leave your teammate to get the res, it's even worse because now the enemy gets a free 1v1. So in general, it's better to push the 2v1. And when you are pushing, make sure you're both able to shoot at roughly the same time. The reason this is so crucial is that if you're not shooting together, you're just risking giving the enemy an easy 1v1. And while sometimes it can be a good idea to push the same lane together, it can also backfire as now they have no one to stop them from just running away. So it's usually better to push from two different angles. However, you do want to make sure that you're both ready to shoot before you engage. So generally push the 2v1. However, if the res is super safe and you don't have to go far for it, obviously just get it. But in my opinion, it's often better to just push the 2v1. Given the option, is it more important to stop the res or get the res? Well, it's mostly context dependent. Where are the locations? Where are the enemies? How far are you, etc. But again, it's just a numbers thing. If you have numbers advantage, you should stop the res since you're already closer to winning the round and you'll have more firepower than the enemy. If you're at a numbers disadvantage, then you should prioritize getting the res as you are closer to losing the round. If it's even, then it's usually just whichever is closer or which one is safer. Now, there are obviously a huge amount of scenarios that can happen, but these are the ones that I think you'll encounter pretty regularly. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of what to do and what not to do in those situations. So now you should probably understand what play the res means, as well as its two subcategories, stopping the res and getting the res. Now, usually I would put up a list right now that kind of recapped all the ideas we talked about in the video, but I'm not going to do that this time. And the reason for it is that I want you to try to recall what we actually talked about. This might seem a little bit counterintuitive because I'm not giving you the information, but recalling and retrieval is one of the best ways to help you memorize something. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to remember what the main topic of the video was, its two subcategories and the four details that went along with them. Now that you're armed with some ideas, you need to be able to turn them into skills. It's one thing to have new information, it's another thing to turn it into action. And if you're wondering what are the best methods of implementing new ideas and skills, my previous video covers that extensively. Implementing these ideas and guidelines will give you some new tools that can bring you closer to that tough win and one step closer to the lighthouse. And in my opinion, playing the res is the difference between a team that doesn't know how to play trials and a team that goes flawless. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And hopefully some of you found that valuable. If you have any ideas on what my next video should be on, let me know in the comment section below. And I do apologize for the long hiatus, it was definitely not intentional. Uh, we just ended up celebrating Christmas really, really early here for whatever reason. But uh, hopefully I'll get back to doing these on a normal frequency. And for everyone that made it to the end of the video, happy practicing.